Hello, Mr. Kurito Rai, Assistant Professor of Dr. Shubhir Chandra Shu Degree Engineering College, Electrical Engineering Department. I am taking Control System 1. Today, my topic is Introduction to Control System. So, what is control system? So, why the control system is required? This is the first question that arrived when you know, approach to this subject, the control system. So let us take an example, the example of our fan that we have seen in the, in our house, the fan that is rotated and it can rotate in different speeds. So this speed, depending on the circumstances that the atmosphere in the room is hot or the, it is cold. So depending upon that, we have to adjust this speed so that's why we are using a regulator so this regulator is used to control the speed of the fan so that is why the conception of the control system is come in order to control a particular system or otherwise in order to make a system stable one okay that is why the conception of the control system come and the control system can be classified into two parts. One is called the open loop, another is called the closed loop control system. So, what is open loop control system? So, let draw a block. This is a block. Okay, just like that. This is the block. This is known as open loop system OL and this is the output from the system and this is an excitation in the form of input is given to the system so this is called a open loop system why there is no feedback only the input is given and only we are getting the output so this is generally known as open loop system so the open loop system is that input doesn't depend on the output so this is called the open loop system so any type of time dependent system is the open loop system the example is the washing machine so this is generally known as open loop system so this is this the block diagram of an open loop system an open loop system and excitation is given and the output is in the form of input and the output, the response that we are getting. So this is generally known as the open loop system. So what is the closed loop system? So closed loop system is that input is depend on the output. So now we have learned, just recall our memory, the why the control system is required and what are the classification of control system. So it is obvious that the control systems are of two types. One is called the open loop control system and another is called the closed loop control system. And the diagram of the open loop control system is given here. This is the diagram of an open loop control system. Only input is there and the output is given, found. Okay. So example is the washing machine. Now we are coming to the closed loop control system. So let's Let's take the why the closed loop control system is there. Why the conception of the closed loop is coming? Closed loop is coming because our main motto is to control. What we can control? We can minimize the error signal. This particular portion, this is called the error signal. We can minimize this error signal in order to make the system output or the system response nearer to the desired one or in order to make the system a stable one. So that is why we are using an feedback or so called the closed loop control system. So let's draw it. Let's draw that particular block diagram. So this is an plan transfer function or a plan. So, 
they are even summing point that I have taken. This one is our plus sign, and we are providing an excitation in form of input, and we are getting the output in the form of C. Now we are introducing an feedback from the output and this is called the feedback element H and this is the feedback path that is given to the summing point okay in order to minimize the error signal so which part is the error signal this is part is known as this signal is known as error signal This signal is known as the error signal. So our main motto is to minimize that error signal to get the desired output. So this is a feedback part. This is known as summing point. So this entire phenomenon is known as closed loop because we are creating a loop and we are closing the loop with the help of the feedback okay that is why this is called a closed loop we are closing the loop we are taking the feedback from the output to make the output a desired one in order to minimize the error signal and in order to make the system a stable one this is called the closed loop so now this one this is called the closed loop system there is a plant, there is an error signal, the output is C, this is the feedback element, this is the feedback path, this is the summing point, the excitation is given in the form of input and output we are obtained, this error signal must be minimized. So R is known as reference signal or the reference input. This figure is known as closed loop block diagram. This is a block diagram that we have first formed a block from an open loop to a closed loop in order to minimize the error signal, in order to provide a output which is desired one in order to improve the stability so this is the main objective of an control system so this is the main objective of an of a control system to nullify the error signal and to improve the stability of the system okay so now whatever the signal that we have taken till now it is in the time domain okay so another domain we have it is called the frequency domain so what is the frequency domain just we have to see it so the frequency domain is s is generally sigma plus j omega so this is the frequency domain Okay, so we till now we have drawn the xy plane. Now we will draw sigma j omega plane, generally known as s plane. We all the poles of the system lying on the left hand side of that is when the system is said to be a stable one okay so we can able to meet the stability of the system with the conception of s plane sigma plus j omega that the frequency plane that we have introduced the plane is called the frequency domain so let us consider this block. So we have now very much, uh, uh, this is known to us very much that the frequency domain, what is the frequency domain? This is called the S-plane domain. And if the poles are lying on the left-hand side of the S-plane, so our MUCO is to make the poles on the left-hand side of the S-plane to make a system stable one. Okay, so this is the most important phenomena in case of the control system study. So, Let us 
is a transfer function in time domain called gt and output is generally known as cp and the input is generally known as rt in the time domain so the output cp that is given here CT is nothing but the convolution of GT and the RT. Okay. So this is generally known as the output in the time domain. Now let that output is converted to the frequency domain or the S domain. Okay, so this is the frequency domain output. So what is the frequency domain output? So what is the frequency domain output? So let's take a log call G is the transfer function domain output is cs and the input is rs okay this is the so the cs the total output can be written as gs RS. GS, RS. So it is found that the CT, the time domain output is nothing but the Laplace inverse of output that we get in the frequency domain so in the AS domain that output we have get taking the Laplace inverse of the particular output we will get the output in the time domain so just recall our memory that what we have learned is that the introduction to the control system is there because in order to improve the stability of the system or in order to get the desired output. So the desired output can be found by minimizing the effect of error signal. So the error signal effect can be minimized in order to make an open loop signal a closed loop one. This is a kind of sensing, the sensor type, the feedback that is fed to the summation point so that the difference between the input, that is the R, and the feedback is minimized so that means difference between the R and the C is minimized means we are minimizing the, the gap between the R and C is minimizing means we are minimizing the air signal. If we can able to minimize the error signal, that means the stability that we have obtained from the transfer function, a stability that we are going to obtain, which is improving. And this is the main part in order to go or in order to study the control system stability of the system and another important part that when I move from the time domain to the Laplace domain is the AS domain platform it is found that the poles are lying on the left hand side of the S pen that we have seen the system is stable so our main motto is to make our system stable so the open loop system and the closed loop system that we have discussed today 
the control system, the introduction to the control system stability that we have discussed today. We have discussed so how to form the block diagram and what is the feedback and what is the effect of the feedback and the feedback element and the time domain and the Laplace domain that we have, the frequency domain. And in both domain, how we can make a system a stable one. This is our main finding or the main thing that we have learned in case of the control system. So the control system is basically required in our daily life, daily life phenomenon where we can try to input the stability of some systems. So in that particular purposes, the control system is very much helpful for us. So this kind of sensors that we are generally using, the sensors that are sensing the particular output that is given and it sensing back to the input that the error signal can be minimized. So the, again that I am repeating that the open loop system is generally the input of the system doesn't depend on the output. But in case of the closed loop system, the input is dependent on the output. In a time dependent system is the open loop system. Then it is known as the example is the washing machine of an open loop system. But the control system study is generally the conception of the closed loop system. The closed loop system conception is there because we have to sense the output we have to feed it back to the input in order to make a system stable one. Our main study of the control system is the stability of the system. The stability of the system, how we can able to improve the stability of the system. And the domain that we have discussed about the time domain and the frequency domain, or the age domain. There is a sigma plus geometer domain, domain that we have already known. So in order to find the time domain analysis from the frequency domain, only the Laplace inverse can be done to find the, the Laplace inverse can be done to find the time domain analysis from the frequency domain. So this type of study of the control system is done because to improve the performance of the system and the, also the behavior of the system can be improved. So today we have done the control system, the introduction of the control system study and why the control system is required and what is the open loop and the, what is the closed loop system, what is the block diagram and what are the domains are there and how to convert a time domain, a frequency domain system to a time domain one and how the output we get from the frequency domain and the time domain. So, that we have done today. Thank you.